welcome to curry tv so this is actually an update for you guys so many of you guys been asking about how to grow your own curry leaf in different zones so here in this video we'll be come giving you a full introduction from start to finish we'll be guiding you through all the soil that we need the fertilizers and all that kind of stuff to give you more update, I have the expert here who is our dear friend Lini. She was with us in the beginning when we actually showed that curry leaf, her house full of curry leaf plants. So she's going to show her tips and tricks of growing a nice healthy curry leaf plant at home. So without further ado, over to you Lini. Thank you Sumi. <laughs> um, first of all, let me tell you I'm not an expert but I have grown curry plants for many years. So this is from like doing, I have learned some tricks. Okay, that and is what we call an expert, but okay, no problem. And She's being very humble and we <laughs> accept that. No worries. This Northwest uh, area of uh, United States, it's very hard to grow curry leaves, first of all. And I keep mine, because I have space inside the house, I keep mine always inside. But in the summer, you can keep it outside, but you have to be very careful about the heat wave and the wind. And so, you know, for a few days, of course, you can keep it outside, but mine, one or two I keep outside, then the rest I keep it inside. Do you mean by outside, meaning like in the garage or something, or do you? No, outside in the outside, sun. Outside, outside in the sun. But okay. um, when the night temperature goes down, like in end of August, September, definitely you have to bring it inside. Yes. They are very sensitive to cold temperature and here the temperature goes down, even if it's sunny during the daytime, nighttime it goes down a lot. So as soon as the uh, winter comes or the cold weather comes, just bring it inside. So uh, do, towards the fall season, we actually bring all the plants inside, whomever do you want to keep for next year. So would you say the temperature like uh, close to 55 and below, that yes. it is safe to take our uh, VIPs, right? Last yes. time we called them the VIPs. And only I worry about like, you know, bringing bugs inside. Mm -hmm. So when I before I bring the curry leaves inside, I try to remove like maybe a few, like a, one inch of one or two inches of soil from the top. Mm -hmm. I remove it and throw it away because okay. maybe some fungus gnats or some worms or something, you know, unwanted things. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to bring it inside. So I remove the soil from the top a little bit, then bring it inside okay. and keep it in like a little sunny location wherever the window gets a little sunlight. Mm -hmm. I keep it inside. So do you give them a haircut before you bring them in? Sometimes if it's very tall and I give a cut or but the final pruning I do it in the springtime like end of February March okay. Okay. then if, I, while it's inside the house itself you yes. give a pruning yes okay and fertilizer I give only once or twice twice a year yeah yeah okay so do you want to see how I plant it yes we are going to that's the whole thing we are going to be showing you from start to finish so we have few plants that we prepared ahead of time that has been uh, in a small container and we are going to move this to a bigger pot and which kind of pot you need what kind of soil you'll need which brand it is what kind of proportions you need for your fertilizer all of that will be mentioned in this video so stay tuned and without further ado let me go for yes. the video and this one you know I see this plant mm -hmm. so this one you can separate it okay you know if you are courageous yeah you can just dig through it and remove it okay. and put it in a plant Different, uh, or okay. what you can do is as a whole mm -hmm. you transplant ideally you should do it in the springtime right. but now I think the weather is okay and I'm not going to disturb it much mm. so I can transplant it okay. but maybe in the spring you can separate it you know right. just put a wear a glass and dig through it okay. and put and it as you're taking this um, whole thing out of the pot it should you be able to see if the roots are combined or separated yes only if the roots are separated we should uh, separate them. no uh, yeah you can just you know pull it out pull and it out. I have done it many times many of my plants are like babies from the other plants okay but this year you know I didn't water from the top because I had some fungus gnats problem mm -hmm. so I was watering it from the bottom so I didn't have many babies right. so if you water it from the top you always get babies okay so, so that's another tip when you uh, water when you're having the plant inside if you keep watering from the top you will get more babies from there if you were to uh, water the lower uh, dish and that will suck up the enough, enough water for it you won't get enough babies out of that plant but to why we do that is to keep the pest away or yeah the so this year i was watering from the bottom see i put water here then it will 
take the water and right. uh, when i am keeping it inside i water it only once a week once a week and there is also a tip for that and many of you guys asked about that question and we will get to that so without further ado first thing what we are going to show is different types of soil that we use and the fertilizers and all that kind of stuff right yeah and then we will take this apart as well so you will see everything would you want to do this first and then mix the soil no no i'll mix the soil and show right. you and you know the original soil in this area is clay mm. so i usually buy organic because i'm keeping it inside and this is edible plant mm -hmm. i use organic soil potting mix and i mix equal part of organic supporting mix then the worm fertilizer mm. worm casting worm you cast. and peat moss you mix it equal part okay or what i do is mix the potting mix with the um, uh, I make my own fertilizer. Mm -hmm. See all these uh, vegetables and the tea bags. Everything goes in my composter, mm -hmm. so I get the fertilizer from fertil from the from organic, the, the organic one. So you know compost. exactly what's in there. So you mix half of that, okay. the organic, um, from the compost, and half of the, the uh, potting mix. Potting mix. Okay. Then mix it and put it in a pot. Okay. And or if you don't have the organic mix. Your own compost. Arms, compost. Uh -huh. You buy the 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 fertilizers and the all the other things, all the other like things the together. The nutrients that it needs yeah. for the plant. So we will be talking to you about the perlites, the um, very cast, right? The worm cast, worm cast, peat moss, peat moss and the coir. Coir, you know, it's a uh, th th this retains the moisture. That's right. why the only if you put the potting mix, it cannot retain the moisture that's mm. why you mix everything together okay. so i'm going to show you how to do it right so this is the part that we're yes going to always to. Uh, it's better to use a bigger pot mm. because when it grows you don't want to transplant it again mm. and make sure it has good drainage so this one has good drainage and in case if you have any fungus gnats or fruit flies or anything you can water from here okay. to the best way to keep the bugs away is keep the soil dry mm. so in normal cases you can water from the top mm. once a week good enough or whenever it is when you feel it's dry mm. if you're keeping it outside probably you might need to water it every two days or something but because i keep mine inside i water only once a week okay. so what i do is even if it has drainage holes i'll just put two three stones or some rocks just to just to get some uh, volume space, space. yes yeah. aerate that whole surface yes. okay then you mix the soil okay so you got the pot ready so we're going to keep that side so you guys can see that's the other question you guys uh, showed yes what, uh, asked about which brand and all that kind of stuff so we're going to so show i'm you going to use four things okay potting mix then the worm castings peat moss and the coir uh, that powder mm. so four things i'm going to take equal parts okay or you can use the potting mix plus your compost so, so here mm -hmm. this is a worm cast i said like four things equal parts okay, okay. or two things the homemade compost and the potting soil equal parts okay, okay? So, so i'm this this is the um, uh, worm castings vigorous vermiculite yes this is the one that we got okay and the next one this is, is the coir. coir so the what this is, is the from the is? coconut uh, husk mm -hmm. so th this one you know retains the moisture in the pot okay. so i have one of my curry plant here for like more than 15 years so this is going to stay there for many many years so you have to make sure that you have the correct combination right so this and is the brand that we are using and this is the color that you get and this is peat moss this one also you know uh, from the tree this is kind of like a bark dust and it keeps the um, soil moist and you don't have to use this brand you can get it any brand okay right. we're just showing Show you what we are actually high, yes. um, going to be so, uh, potting yes and this is a potting soil as i said like our soil is mostly clay so you need to add to it mm -hmm. so this is all natural potting mix that we just got it ready yes if you have your own good soil use that or if you want to mix this yes. with some compost of your own feel free yes. to do that and i have used just the potting soil also sometimes but sometimes it works but you know it's better you know you mix all these and fill the pot okay so you're going to mix it all together yes okay so just mix it Making yes. sure that it, it distributes very well all throughout. Yes. Now get the pot and mix it. Okay. I have filled this like, like this much, like Three half. Fourth. Three fourth. Yes. 
next what I'm going to do is just take it out like that without disturbing the root much then just put it there okay I feel I feel this baby is looking very healthy I'm going to try separating it because this one will grow as it is so I just like separated it just like that broke the root from there so I'm going to plant it in another pot okay so I'm ready to finish this one so we yeah. just moved, it in, moved it in safely and I didn't move it much except I removed the baby from there what we did we actually took a look at if the baby is healthy enough that's why we say okay it is time to um, transplant it. yeah and as soon as you transplant it make sure you give a little water so again put like few pieces of um, rocks just for the drainage and same thing and I, I divide it to multiple babies so mix it half fill then put the plant so put it like that and so one done one done actually two done so this is halfway done then you put it and always make sure water it So that it sets down so you know it doesn't get the transplant shock quickly mm -hmm. so. so the advantage of this pot is it has the drainage the mm -hmm. it will catch the drainage all these pots need something underneath Okay. And you can buy these kind of dishes uh, yeah. from your local hardware. Yes, yeah. planting is done. Right. Now, you know, I, as I said, I'll keep it inside. <laughs> yes. Because it's too windy and some days it's, it's too warm. Mm. So protect Especially it. Especially with this global warming, we've yes. been getting a lot more heat waves. So it might not be too, too tolerable for these plants. That's why we are actually transferring all of these plants indoors. Yes. Um, if you have a green light, uh, grow light, that that's for the winter, winter but time. you know because I keep it inside in a warm place the sunlight comes from the side mm -hmm. so curry leaves grow in full sun or partial shade as long as it gets a little bit of sunlight mm -hmm. it will survive it will survive so make sure that it is away from traffic so if you have little kids make sure yes. that they do not go reaching in for those little tender leaves so yes. that's also one thing maybe we can also talk about our precautions what kind of things that we do for uh, to keep them healthy well, uh, yes any, any because this is the end of the season, mm -hmm. fall season is coming. So curry plant at uh, three, four months, you know, just stays like that. You don't get much leaves mm -hmm. in the winter time. Then in the springtime, it makes new leaves. So from now, like now I won't fertilize. Okay. This is enough this and is enough. let it root. Okay. And if you have three, four curry plants, I think you get enough for your use. Your own use, yes. absolutely. And by this way, I do want to give a disclaimer that we are not authorized to sell any curry plants. So um, we don't have anything. This is actually something that we bought from a farmer's market that is local here. And from there, we've been keeping that healthy all throughout the year. And then we just waited one year or one full year and then we transferred it. And we just did this just for you guys nothing else okay so yeah i wanted to give everybody a plant but this year you know i had a little bug problem so i didn't water from the top so i didn't get many babies right, but so if i have a lot of baby plants i'm happy to distribute it. and yes. if you are local we will definitely let you know but we do want to give and emphasize on this we are we, by by any means this we have no guarantee this will survive or this will not so yes. if you were to buy something look how healthy the plant it is and then invest in it so by growing as we all are green thumb is very very much needed because you need to give that tlc tender love and care they are really live plants they do feed you you could add this in your curries um it adds more flavor to your dishes so definitely it's so fragrant too right yeah next we are going to be talking about how to fertilize what kind of precautions you need to take 
when you have an issue so that's what we're going to be talking about throughout we also did a compost how to create your own compost at home uh, we did a video before uh, maybe a couple months ago so feel free to check that out and in case if you are uh, interested in building your own compost we talk to you directly about each portions here we're going to give you a small demo of that as well Lini jump in yes so okay. For now, just leave it as it is, don't fertilize. Now the dormant season is coming, so just leave it as it is, let it root. Then in the springtime, if you want, you could put a little compost from your compost bin. See, I use all my kitchen scrapping, the cucumber, tea bags, all the green leaves. Then I put like for the brown, whatever the paper we use, just put it. Then everything goes to the composter. So in an year, like I take the compost out like two times a year. So if you want to add that to the um, curry leaf, you can do that. Or you can buy stored Osmo cord. Sometimes I use the Osmo cord. I don't have the container here. And this is any organic fertilizer. And if you are keeping the curry plant outside, people say the fish emulsion is very good for curry plant. but because I keep it inside, I don't want to smell the house, <laughs> so I don't use the fish emulsifier. Or some people put the seaweed fertilizer, that might not smell, but I haven't used it, but those are supposed to be good. But what I use is, if you want, you could use buttermilk, dilute the yogurt, mm. make it very loose and add it to it. And, and what's the quantity? Because when we talk about this, everybody is so worried about no, what you the follow the instructions. So, uh, each package comes with in, uh, in, directions in yeah. the back. So and feel free to check it out and then we'll go through yeah, And less fertilizing is easier than more. More okay. fertilizer can cause problems, so always less. So make sure you dilute it well. And I don't throw away the rice water when you wash the rice. Um, before cooking or after cooking I keep it mm. I uh, this uh, this kind of plants like acidic soil mm. and they like this is supposed to have vitamin B and nitrogen and all those so I am experienced and I use this one whenever I have rice water okay maybe now this is uh, is it any rice water that's the next thing you guys were asking about can you use basmati rice water can you use sonamasuri uh, rice yes any rice any rice water and okay. but make sure you dilute it okay you don't okay. want to do more just dilute it well and if I am not using it for the curry plant you can see all my vegetables growing well here I put it there okay. and also conserving water why right. waste water so exactly. when you wash rice you use a lot of water so either I use it for the curry plant or some for the vegetables multi-purpose the kitchen is yes your home, uh, yes and another problem is sometimes the curry plants turn yellow so best that's usually magnesium deficiency okay. so I always have Epsom salt candy and um, dilute it according to the instructions always make sure you dilute it okay and sometimes you know the rice water i use to prevent the smell i use a spoon and dig a little bit of soil then i just pour it there and cover it okay so you know and the top stays dry okay all right so we yes. got all of that Next, and so that is the fertilizing things that we did so this is part two of uh, fertilizing next yes. what we are going to talk about is pest and um, all that kind of stuff the bugs. most common pest I have seen in my curry plant is aphids and um, always you know go check your plants if they look weak or even just look underneath the leaf Efforts. Uh, if I had efforts, I could have shown it to you. But if you look around, That's some don't have any other, right? some okay. plants will have efforts. I can, if there is, I can show you. And one of the reason I keep the bird food here. A lot of birds come here, and the birds eat um, efforts. If you are keeping the plant outside, that the birds help. Also, like the ladybugs, some people even buy ladybugs and put it in your yard. But I don't have much aphid problem. So if you have aphid, um, you know you can always use the neem, neem oil. You can buy the mix like this in Home Depot or any garden store. Or what I you this is more less expensive. You buy like this concentrated neem oil. So I got it through Amazon and follow the direction. So I mix it with water and a uh, little bit of dish soap and this has all the instructions here then put it in a spray bottle 
and like spray and if you see efforts put it underneath or so it's not a bad idea to use it like every three months but if you have efforts use it more often also when it's too sunny don't use the oil spray because it can kill the leaves so make sure you use it in the morning or late evening after the sunlight is gone because with oil it can melt the leaf when it's hot okay. so those are my, and also i have used if you see any fungus gnats or this fruit is something flies in the last video and you guys yeah. were so curious about it this and is like you can get it in amazon this is uh, the yellow sticky paper mm -hmm. so you put it like a, um, attach it to like a stick and put it there and the flies will go and catch, on catch. To that. so and by any means uh, because we've been calling out each brand and stuff by any means they do not promote this okay so we don't want to give any disclosures or any promotions for those brands we are just uh, giving you raw as what we a uh, few of us use here especially in the northwest so please feel to feel free to check these out uh, try it out definitely in your zone whichever zone that you're in please ask a, uh, a, a professional um, gardener in your local hardware store or garden shop they might be able to give you more uh, better guidance for your problems this is what we do especially in the northwest yes and you know if you don't want to buy that i use this this gadget this is um, a bug catcher so this also i got it from amazon and you just plug it in and it has a light inside and it makes like a buzzing mm. noise so the bugs get attached to it and then um, you know like this you can open it and this um, throw away the bugs okay so you will see the dead, dead bugs there. there. It's okay. very good for fruit flies and uh, um, fungus gnats and mm -hmm. all those. So I don't have any bugs inside the house because I put that one in. Even if you don't have any of these fancy tools and stuff, if you have apple cider vinegar, yeah, I think that is also something what we use, right? Yes, do you, do yes. you want to give that recipe as well? Yeah, yeah. You, can, you know, just take apple cider vinegar in like a container or a glass, put la cover it with a saline wrap, make some holes and make sure you put a little bit of dish soap with the apple cider then the apple cider has that pungent smell and the bugs go looking for the cider and because it has cider has the soap it's uh, when it goes inside it is stuck there and it's dead there it cannot come out so that i have used it a lot but since after i bought this one i think i like that one better and there are so many different brands somehow this works for us right and now we have this one even now, though this one uh, this is just a neem oil right. soap and water mix so this is the color that it looks like so that's why we transferred uh, this concentrate into yes. a clear bottle this is not windex yeah, yeah, yeah. it is actually a clear bottle just to yeah, so yeah. show you guys the consistency and the color yeah, that you yeah. should just see. follow the instructions the neem oil this is a concentrated neem oil okay so in this video we have completed transplanting your healthy relief plant uh, uh, fertilizer all the soil that you need what mm. kind of things that pest you need control to, pest control all that next topic is pruning so please over to you expert. okay so first of all curry plant is very sensitive okay with a little bit of heat uh, or cold uh, the temperature sometimes you will see the leaves falling down or like some invisible bugs you won't even see it so the leaves fall down then some people ask me Lini, all the curry plant is dead but it's not dead okay so what you do is just prune it and what I do is see this one is a big stem so that's so, a color change. Maybe yeah. we can have a, give you a close-up view yeah. of this. Yeah, this it, is the stem. As you can see, this is the main branch. So it made two branches here. So it had last year it had leaves here. So what I did was because the leaves fell down, cut it, chopped it there, chopped it there. So usually it makes like two or three like that. It splits two or from three. where you cut so, it. So yeah, so it splits from where you cut. So in the spring, if you chop it, you will get maybe two, three. Okay. So. So use your common sense and like, you know. I mean, by common sense, some people might be very scared. Oh, should I do it? Uh, they might be feeling that intense. What will happen if I do do this, right? So yeah, this yeah. is why we're going to show you color by color. So this is a healthy plant, but this healthy plant you should not cut right now because yeah, yeah. it needs to bring up that nice thickness to the, uh, the root itself. Yes. That's when you actually go in because you can see she's keeping her other younger ones or the tender yeah, lines yeah. Uh, very healthy and just as is she did not prune it here 
but yeah. she prunes the ones that is nice and thick and yeah. that's where you do so next year if this one grows well so this one has branch here branch here so in the spring if it's doing really well and if the all the leaves fell down or something i'll chop it here chop it here then usually it makes two or three here two or three here it can be bushy bushy okay that's another thing and here's one thing they were asking if you were to use this for curry right how do you prune that how can you use do you break off each branch or stem by itself or yeah what do i you do? i use the scissors the okay. ki, uh, regular kitchen not shear. this one the regular kitchen shear then i go to the bottom okay then just cut it how much ever you're going to use for your purpose yeah i usually use up. like from one you know okay then just leave it like that for and how long the younger ones are on the top so i won't disturb it okay so some most of the time you know may, many of them lose their leaves by fall mm. so it's better use it and right. we are not like going this is not for show this is for use also right. that's why some of my curry leaves are not bushy now because mm. i used a lot that's another thing uh, by what we mean by that is that if you were to use these little ones right you just cut the end and just uh, cut it right there you don't chop it right here that's yes. when you want to take your curry in the spring you shop. chop it there but not now yes. when it's a growing season don't chop it exactly and if you want to keep it for long in the freezer or something you remove the each leaf put mm -hmm. it in the ziploc bag and in the freezer it will retain its smell and color all its goodness okay or some people put it in the glass container mm -hmm. keep it in the fridge so it's up to you totally up to you and uh, another question is is this totally edible by using many of these uh, fertilizers and what not yeah, so i usually use the organic fertilizer and uh, you know if i use my own compost i know what went there mm -hmm. and even i put the eggshells in it so it, it get i powder the eggshell mm -hmm. and put it in my compost and put it and some people make the eggshell powder mm -hmm. grind it and keep it and give it okay so you try different things and right. whatever works for you and because if i use neem oil i'll put it in the water for like That's an hour that's why we dilute it down so yeah. it's not such a constant yeah, going yeah. directly into and make plant. sure clean it so wash it so well right. and whenever you use it make sure it doesn't have any aphids or any other bugs and so would you say these are all healthy plants that is edible that we can yes, use for yes, later uses yes. so these are the colors that you want to keep on hand have a library ready so i hope we answered all your questions like we promised we will come back with more videos updates about each curry plant so this is actually something that lini is going to keep and i'm going to take this one home because if there's any bugs in one place it should not spread to the other one yes. so we are going to take a very cautious decision and just be in two separate ways i'm also making my house very 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 friendly to curry leaves so that none of them kids anybody else visitors will not interfere in their growth right so thank you so much you guys i hope you answered many of your questions and concerns if you still have stuff you know where to reach us out Those if you videos, have a lot of babies in your curry plan feel just love, feel free share that with your friends and family sorry right? this year i don't have any more so if i have more i will share with you all right thank you so much for thank watching. you so much and i want to thank lini for taking her time and giving us a complete thorough detail about how to transplant your pl healthy plant how what can you do to make it healthy what are the precautions you should need, you would need um, and all the fertilizations and um, all the pests and stuff all the tips and tricks she gave you some really organic tips so make use of it we'll see you in the next video peace out bye